Hey guys and welcome to Smart Home Things, a channel dedicated to smart home technology. Today we'll be talking about Vimos. Vimos Cześć Graham. Vimos is a microcontroller that can be used to basically create smart devices. You can use it to create your weather station, a sensor and make that uh, talk with uh, MQTT or even your Apple Home or Android Assistant devices. And for today's video we will be creating uh, a simple program that will basically show you the possibilities uh, of this microcontroller. We will create a simple uh, example sketch in Arduino IDE that will make two LEDs uh, blink. Enjoy! Okay, so again, uh, Vimos is a microcontroller, it's similar to Arduino and you can program it yourself or use some pre-existing software. We have uh, Tasmota, a uh, link uh, in the top right uh, hand side for videos about that. You can use ESP Easy, but the most common and uh, quite easy way to do things is use Arduino IDE. In there you can basically uh, leverage all functions that you get with Vimos. And for that you have 11 GPIO ports that you can basically set in high or low state depending on whatever you like. You have Wi-Fi communication so you have basically access to the world so uh, possibles. So you have uh, really a lot of possibilities and one uh, analog input port that supports 3.2 uh, uh, volts so you can measure some analog uh, signals with that. For example, you can measure uh, battery voltage to keep track of your uh, battery powered devices. Uh, also, uh, speaking about power, uh, Vimos uses uh, a standard uh, micro USB connector so it can be powered via standard uh, smart uh, smartphone uh, charger or power bank. Uh, it al also accepts 5 volts and you can charge it uh, uh, via this micro USB uh, socket or directly uh, via its pins. So uh, first off let's start with the software part. Uh, so for that click uh, file. Uh, examples, basics and blink. Okay, so uh, for the software we have two basic parts. We have the setup part and we have the loop part. In the setup part we define all the configuration for our VMOS so it knows uh, how to basically run. So here we have the pin mode function and here we specify the pin number. Let's say we will use pin 13 and pin 14 for output. Uh, there is one catch here in this pin numbering because uh, this is Arduino pin numbering. For this we need a pinout that will translate our uh, Arduino pins for our Vimos pins. So uh, here we can look that pin 13 is GPIO D7 and pin 14 is GPIO D5 on Vimos. Okay, so in here we have defined our pins 13 and 14 as outputs. Then we have uh, our loop command, our loop function, where you have the actual program that is looping when the setup code is finished. So here we have the digital write to the LED. So let's change it for our pin. Uh, and on a side note, Vimos is operating on 3v3 volts logic. So keep in mind to have a 3v3 volt uh, devices when you want to use GPIO commands. 
Okay, so we have uh, pin 13 set high, then pin 13 set low, and between that we have a one second delay. Okay, but we want to have two pins, so so let's take uh, this line, copy it, put pin 14 to high, and then let's take pin 13 and also uh, change it to 14 and set it low. Uh, between all of that we will also input the delays. So let's have a delay here. Let's make it half second. Again, half second between the two diodes. And again in the end. So uh, after all, we should have two LEDs lighting on and off. Okay, so we have our program ready. We can check if everything will compile okay. So we can click verify. When this is verified, we will get compile successful, com com compile uh, ended uh, text. So we know that our code in theory should work. Okay, so now we will take our breadboard and actually make the connections. Okay, so now it's time to actually uh, create our circuit. So things that we'll need. Uh, first, we'll need, of course, the VMOS microcontroller. Then we will need a breadboard. Then we will need some cables. And of course, we will need some LEDs. I'm using two LEDs and you will need a resistor. Okay, so uh, maybe if you have already uh, your VMOS uh, bot and laying ready for you, you may notice that it comes without those headers and you have an option to solder male or female headers. So uh, first you will need to do that. So some soldering before you. Okay, but uh, I have this done already, so uh, as you can see, VMOS uh, has its uh, GPIO ports labeled. Uh, so we defined we are using uh, GPIOs 13 and 14. When we go back to the pinout, we will see that uh, GPIOs 13 and 14 will translate to D7 and D5 on VMOS. So take your cable and connect uh, one, one, uh, one connector to uh, D7 and second connector to D5. Okay, so this is done. Uh, we have uh, two cables connected to D7, D5. Uh, we will need one additional cable uh, and connect it to ground and ground is labeled as G. Okay, great, we have our VMOS part ready, so three cables, ground, D7, D5. Now with the breadboard and LEDs. Uh, how the breadboard works? This, uh, this column is connected and this column is connected, so basically if you connect something at uh, row one, row 30 also has uh, this connection and then uh, this middle part works that if you connect something on uh, column A, column E also is connected. So on with the connections. The LEDs have two legs, the longer and the shorter. The longer leg means it's plus. Okay, so let's connect the first LED uh, and we will be connecting them in a way that the second leg of both LEDs are connected. So take the longer leg and connect it to uh, 
any basically any uh, row on the breadboard i'm using row 12 for the longer leg and row 18 for the shorter leg now i'm taking the second the second led and i'm taking the long leg and connecting it to uh, row 13 and shorter leg to row 18. so as you can see we have two leds and they are connected one row uh, one row moved uh, between each other so uh, now uh, we will have to uh, connect uh, connect our vmos so take your vmos and as you remember we have d7 and d5 uh, connected to gpio and this is with white and purple cable so take the white cable and connect it to row 12 so for the longer leg of the first uh, led and then take the purple cable and connect it to row 14 and this is the plus the longer leg of second led okay so we have the first uh, part done now we need to do one more thing we have our ground connected with some gray cable so we take this gray cable and connect it uh, and connect it to the minus terminal of the breadboard okay done uh, so uh, we have our circuit completed uh, for the plus side now we need to uh, connect the leds with the ground as you can see the two legs of the leds are connected so now we have to con connect this row 18 with ground so our minus terminal on our breadboard so let's take a resistor you will need a resistor because uh, if you will not use a resistor your leds may take more current than they can and they can just burn up so connect your resistor to port uh, to to row 18 and basically any to uh, any of the minus uh, column okay so again uh, leds have their longer legs in basically uh, any uh, any row uh, switched by switched by uh, one one row and uh, the uh, resistor is connected to uh, both legs of the leds now it's part uh, for the programming connect your vmos to, to usb and press upload when this is done you will see that uh, vmos led starts uh, blinking rapidly and this means the code is being uploaded so wait just one minute and if everything went well then we should have a working circuit okay everything is wired up and the firmware is uploaded so now you can see that our circuit is working we have our vmos connected to a power source and we have two leds blinking so uh, thank you for this part i know this may be simple and uh, basically over talked but i wanted everyone to be able to do this simple example uh, and i'm planning to create a cycle to uh, in the end create your wi-fi solar powered battery powered weather station that can be uh, basically placed anywhere uh, if you like the video uh, please leave a thumbs up uh, remember to uh, like share and subscribe see you in the next one bye